If you're a project manager or a team leader, then you understand the importance of building and maintaining high performing teams. In this video, we're going to share some tips or I'm going to share some tips on how to build those high performance teams set clear expectations. In order for your team to perform well and to be high performing, then they have to be very clear on what it is that they're supposed to be doing. And those expectations become really critical to ensure that. So what are some of the things from an expectation perspective that you have to start thinking about to really build your high performing team? One is roles and responsibilities. What exactly is it that they are supposed to be doing from a responsibility perspective? Laying that out is extremely helpful. Another thing that you have to also is what is it that they're supposed to be doing from an action list perspective? So if you're on a project that makes it a little bit easier because it's task oriented and we all know from a task, I'm in charge of this. From a team lead perspective, it may be a little bit more of I'm responsible for this area or for these things. But again, extremely important that you're clear with those expectation. Another thing to consider as well when it comes to high performing teams is behavior. So yes, we talked about roles and responsibilities and setting up the actions, but what is the behavior, the expectation of behavior? High performing teams are very clear with that. They have very distinct rules of uh, respectfulness, professionalism, doing things on time, things of that nature really are, it's just embedded into that team. But in order for it to be embedded, you're gonna to have to set those expectations right from the beginning, day one. And that's gonna be extremely impactful and to get you on the right foot to getting a high performing team. On a side note, high performing teams also need to be aware of this. So I'm gonna share with you how to get your hands on this a little bit later in the video, so stay tuned for that. Know how to overcome the resistance to change. High performing teams understand that whatever it is that they're doing, that there's probably going to be some sort of resistant to change, particularly for a project team that's implementing something brand new that's going to change a way of working based on what it is that they're implementing. It's like a new version of something. You will have resistance, but high performing teams understand that. And guess what? They plan and prep for it. They put a change resistant plan together and they stick to it to ensure that those end users who are going to be having that new and improved way of working are gonna also buy into it. They also recognize that it's not just at the end that there may be resistance, there may be resistance within the project too. And high performing teams will actually be open to conversation around resistance and talk about it openly and freely and find solutions in order to overcome it. That becomes important. So you do not want to be an ostrich with your head in the sand when it comes to resistant to change. You want to embrace it and you want to deal with it. It's so important. And that's what high performing teams do. Have clear communication. High performing teams understand what it is that they are supposed to be doing. They communicate it clearly. There's a communication plan that everyone follows. And it's kind of like the rules of working from a communication perspective. They're constantly in communication with each other and with the project manager. So having a clear communication strategy plan that everyone executes on, embraces and follows is what all high performing teams do. Focus on continuous improvement. No team is perfect. No team is even good from the get go, but high performing teams, it took a while. It, it takes time to get to high performance. But how does that happen? Well, one of the things is continuous improvement. High performing teams understand this, that they're gonna build off everything that they do in order to get better. And the best way to go about doing this is by reviewing what you just did or at a milestone, how did we perform? Is there anything we need to improve upon? The nice thing is I actually have a YouTube video. If you go search bar, Adriana Girdler after action review, this is a great template to use to actually analyze how well the team did on executing certain things. Cause it talks about uh, what is it that you were to do, what actually happened, and then what could we do better? How can we improve upon it? What do we want to keep, etc. It's this analysis on continuous improvement that really makes a good team great and a great team high performing. Celebrate success. 
Now, celebrate all kinds of successes, whether they're milestone achievements, whether it's the completion of a project, or whether it's there was this real big issue and everyone got through it together and they found a really good creative solution, celebrate that. Now, when it comes to celebration, you don't have to have everything extremely grand. Yeah, at the end of a project, it's really cool when you can do a really awesome, good, celebration where you take people out, you maybe even get them a gift, however that may be, depending on your budget, obviously. But you know what, even the smaller uh, types of celebration where everyone just finished uh, brainstorming, they came up with an awesome idea, high fives and guys, let's all go for some coffee right now. Like have a little break. That's a little mini celebration. Giving out thanks to celebrate great jobs that people have done. Celebration just brings people together and acknowledges the hard work that they're doing because I promise you high performing teams, they are knocking things out of the park. And so you don't want to take that for granted. You want to acknowledge it and you want to celebrate it. Focus on quality of work. So high performing teams really understand that it's not just about knocking things out of the park, right? And getting things done because again, when you're high performing, there's a lot you can accomplish, but it's doing it with quality in mind. And that's a really cool thing about high performing teams is they understand this. So you're guaranteed to not only get things done quicker, but to do it in high quality. So what are some of the things that you do to ensure that you have good quality built in with your high performing team. And this is probably the big thing that distinguishes high performing teams from other types of teams is that high performing teams work together. Quality on a product is not done by one person, it's done collectively as a group. So a high performing team to ensure quality may have someone develop something, a few other people provide some insights, and as a group they just do a final quality check to make sure it's good before they go on to the next step. Address conflict immediately. High performing teams aren't afraid of conflict because conflict does not mean that when things aren't going well or you may not agree with someone that that is a negative thing. Conflict just means, okay, you know what? We're not agreeing. We're having a little bit of a hard time to get past this, but because we're a high performing team, I'm going to listen. I'm going to hear what you have to say. I'm going to provide the feedback and guess what? I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm going to let it go by addressing it immediately. There are no elephants in the room, meaning that things that we know exist, but no one's talking about it with high performing teams. There's none of that. Why? Because they understand that in order to really perform collectively in sync as one entity, you can't have any of that stuff. So the best way to do that is to ensure that if things are popping up, address it right away. Don't sweep it under the rug. Don't pretend it does not exist. And give some skills and tools to your teams to let them know how can they address conflict. One of the things I'd like to do with my team is if there is conflict, you can say, hey, you know what? Just hold on a minute. This is what I'm sensing right now that perhaps we may not be all on the same page. Is that true? Can hands up? Like, are we are we all on the same page? Do we have consensus? Are we all in agreement to move forward with this, even though we may not 100 percent agree with it, but we're willing to support it. And that's a nice technique to ensure that you address conflict, but you also can move forward through the conflict because you don't want to be stuck in it where you can't get past anything because you're just in a conflict mode constantly. So high performing teams deal with it. Don't shy away from conflict. Have a positive team culture. High performing teams, they're positive. They see things with the glass half full, not the glass half empty. So when they're looking at what's going on, a challenge, ideas, they're always working together and looking at it from a positive standpoint. So when challenges occur, it's not, oh, we can't do this because this is how it always is. It's like, how can we find a way to make it happen? They move mountains. And a lot of that is just because they have a very positive aspect and a culture within the team. Why? Because they're working as one unit. They know they're not alone and they know they're going to have the ability to work off of each other and ensure that each other has each other's back. That's a positive team culture and something that is important that you have to work at and develop. All right, you've made it to a point where I told you I was gonna tell you about this, how to get your hands on it. Something that's really important because if you want a positive 
culture for your team or just having a high performance team, you need to also be aware of this because you want to minimize your failure so your team can focus on success. Where can you get this? It's underneath this video in the link below and it's free for you. So go, 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 check it out. Make sure you watch this next video. If you still have questions on how to lead a high performance team, I got you covered in this one. If you could like this video, join our community. We'd love to have you. And on that note, we'll see you at the next video. See ya.